Okay, so now we'll start recording. And every 30 minutes or so, that thing's going to turn off, as you know. Mm -hmm. and I'll restart it again. Um, so yeah, so I said, you know, kind of, sort of, three or four main areas. You know, there's the derived sets, there's homeomorphisms, there's the separation axioms, and there's open covers and compactness. Those are like the main subject matters um, that we're going to be looking at for the for the uh, exam. And so I'm going to give you guys some practice problems here sure. um, to help us get started. So let's just start kind of a little bit a little bit easy here. Okay, I'll just take take something a little a little simple. And I'm trying to write problems here that I think would be, you know. Reasonable, not not anything too crazy. Okay, so um, let's uh, let x tau be a topological space, um, and a is a subset of b is a subset of x. So suppose you have uh, one subset inside of another, which is then inside of another. Show that the closure of A is a subset of the closure of B. Okay, so um, this is something that we actually discussed in class. So we already did it. Now this isn't in the list of theorems because this is like a small thing. This is something that even if you didn't like sit home memorizing the result, right, I would like to think that you could maybe figure out how to prove this anyway. Right? And that's the idea behind it, okay? So, um, you know, this is a good chance for us to try something cold. Try to do something cold. So imagine we didn't really study this proof, but we still want to show this is true. Okay? So, A is a subset of B. We want to show that the closure of A is a subset of the closure of B. Can uh, you guys remind me, what is the closure of a set again? It's the intersection of every closed set containing the set itself. So, the Correct. closure of B would be all the closed sets containing the key. Right, it's an intersection of, you know, all of the closed sets, I'll call them F, inside of X, such that uh, F is closed and F contains B, right? So it would look, it would basically be that kind of a thing. And in, conceptually, you can just think of it also as the smallest closed set. Remember that uh, closed sets are preserved under arbitrary intersections. Um, so it's the smallest closed set containing capital B. Ben, there's another chair over here if you want to sit closer. Oh. It's, it's up to you. We can, we can squeeze you in over here if it's too far to sit, because I might have to write small. Uh, it's not a very big board here. Okay, so that's just the definition of the, of the closure of a set. So if A is a subset of B, and we want to prove that the closure of A is a subset of the closure of B. Does anybody have a suggestion how to do that? A must also be in all of those Fs that you took the intersection of. So this is the closure of the larger set B. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, you know, so we have... Some, you, you guys are certainly welcome to draw some pictures. The picture is not going to be the proof, of course, but it can help you to visualize what's going on. Let me just draw like this. So we have A and then B... And then the closure of B is outside of there, right? Okay, and in particular, this is a closed set, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, so cl the closure of the closed set is, it, is itself. The closure of a closed set would be itself. That's true as well. So another, another little fact, this is not um, directly going to solve the problem for us, but is a good fact to know, which is that um, you know, uh, I'll just call it um, H, <laughs> just to use a different letter that's not part of this problem. H is closed if and only if the closure of H is equal to H, right? So that's another useful thing to remember about the closure of a set. I think it would be helpful to write out that same definition for the closure of A. For the closure of A, okay. Because we'll be able to see all of the closed sets containing A. Okay, You'll so see. let's just do that. So, well, I can do that very easily, easier than you guys can. <laughs> just erase my, my B here. So this is the closure of A. Okay, so the closure of A is the smallest closed set.
containing A. Okay. So if we happen to run across any other closed set that contains A, this one will be smaller than it, right? right? Because this is the smallest closed set that contains A. Can somebody tell me another example of a closed set that contains A? The closure of B. Exactly, and the picture reinforces that. Right? So the closure of B, so now let's go back to the solution here. So this isn't really even the solution yet. This is just, I should just call this background. <laughs> These are just reviewing some facts about the closure, get us started. So maybe here, if we actually start the proof, right, we could say that the closure of B is a closed set containing A. Okay, so the closure of B is a closed set containing A, but the closure of A is the smallest closed set that contains A. So since the closure of A is, or we could just be more direct and just say the closure of A is the intersection of all closed sets containing A, So one of the terms in that intersection is going to be the closure of B. So it's just automatically clear now. This one is just almost proves itself. <laughs> you know, there's not much that you have to say. The, the uh, closure of A is going to be an intersection of a lot of things. That intersection will be contained in each one of those things. And one of the things in that intersection is the closure of B, because the closure of B is a closed set that contains A. Does that make sense to everybody? That's the proof. This is a quick warm-up problem. This one is not. But this could be, this would actually be for the in, probably not for a take-home test, I wouldn't put this, but for in-class test as kind of a warm-up, this would be a nice little question. Okay, it's just it kind of makes sense. Okay. And of course, you know, what you guys can be doing is thinking to yourself, hmm, so in the review session, he did the one with the closure. Maybe I should practice on my own for the interior. Because like that's like the symmetric. Con this is a way of like practicing the corresponding concept for open sets, which is the interior. Okay, so this is a fact about closure. If A is a subset of B, then the closure of A is a subset of the closure of B. It's also true, guys. It's also true that in this in this situation that the interior of A is inside of the interior of B. I don't think I'm going to prove that one in the review because you guys can try it. And it's in the book as well, so you can always look it up. Um, but that's what you should be thinking, right? And that's what I'm hoping the review is going to do for you, is kind of get you thinking a little bit about that. Okay, so that is that. Now let's take a, a little bit harder problem, okay? Um, where we're actually going to take some information that is um, beyond just some, some of the background stuff. Okay, so let's do this. Let's let, this time I'm going to take a metric space. So let x comma d be a metric space. And let's take a to be a subset of x. So you do have to remember a little bit of the material from chapter two, even though the test really isn't about metric spaces, um, I might still have a problem where this where this makes sense. Okay, so then let's let capital A prime. This is actually consistent with the book's notation. I'm going to let this denote the set of limit points of capital A. Um, now, does everybody remember what that means? Boundary. Not quite the boundary. The, uh, that, it's, in other words, it's not the same thing as the frontier. What this is talking about is a limit point, you think, you're thinking of a sequence. Mm -hmm. And it's like the limit of a sequence. So what we're talking about here, guys, is the limit points of all possible sequences of points within A. Okay, so you just take any sequence in A that converges the limit of that sequence is part of A prime. Okay? So I'm going to make this set. I'm just defining this. I'm defining this to be 
instead of all the limit points of A. So for example, everything in capital A, so just this is not what the question is about, but just to point something out here, anything in A, of course, is in A prime because I given given an element here, right, I can create the sequence A, 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 A forever, right? And the limit of that sequence, it does converge and it converges to A itself. So that means that A itself is a limit point of the set. Okay. Why not? Um, okay. okay. So. Well, I get it. I just don't know why it's useful if it's basically the same thing. Because wouldn't everything in A prime also be in A? Are they not equal? Mm, they're not necessarily equal. I'm going to show you right now what we're going to prove. So here is. Oh, the, because you can have a sequence of things outside of A. You can have a sequence of things in A that converges to something that's outside of A. Oh. For example the sequence 1 over n is inside of, well, right. this sequence is inside of here, and but the limit point of this sequence is not part of A. Okay. So what we're going to, to claim, what I'd like us to try to prove here, is that the closure of A is equal to A union with A prime. Okay. Let's we'll see if we can do this. <laughs> All right, so, um, so this is a little bit harder problem because it involves kind of this new concept rather than just the closure. We have this A prime set that I'm defining, right? Um, and we're just going to try to prove, prove this claim, okay? This is a set of points, and this is a set of points, and we want to show that they're equal. How do we a, usually do that? If A is a, a subset of A prime. So I um, A. So then this should just be A prime. A is what prime. you're thinking? Actually, um, let me just think. So A A should be a subset of A prime for the reason that I just gave, right? So if I take a set of points in A, then If I take any point in A, I can create a constant sequence, and that is, therefore, a limit point of that sequence. Okay, maybe in the context that I'm defining it, it should just be equal to A prime. Okay, let's just try it that way. Oh, because A is inside A prime. So, it's so this is just equal to A prime. Yeah, okay. So let's just, let's edit the statement just slightly. Okay, let's try to, try to do this. Um, is that better? Now, which way, uh, which way do you guys want to prove first? Doesn't matter to me. I think they're both equally fun. <laughs> <laughs> Forward. This forward may as well, right? Uh, Let's we'll start with the with the forward direction. Okay, so for the forward direction, we're going to pick an element in the closure of A. So let X be an element of the closure of A. And we would like to show, basically, that x is a limit point of, of a, okay? So, um, to show that x is a limit point of a, which is what we're going to try to do. Um, now, remember, we have a metric space here. So, you know, we're basically trying to show that that there exists, we're trying to show that there exists a sequence. Here's X right here. That there, that there exists a sequence that converges to X, so that it, X is a limit point of the sequence. So we have to construct a sequence. Does anybody have an idea how we can construct a sequence? Do we need to converge to x specifically? Yeah, yeah, it needs to converge to x specifically because we're trying to show that x itself is a limit point. By the way, so if x is in the closure of A, does anybody remember any facts about any element? So we've already explained that the closure of a set is the intersection of all closed sets that contains it. But do we have another way of looking at what the closure is that works 
just for elements. So yeah. X's are in the front of X meets A. Every neighborhood of X meets A. Exactly. So we, we know from a proposition. So again, for the midterm, you know, you don't have to remember the numbers of the propositions, but somewhere back in chapter three, there was a proposition that said X is an element of the closure of A if and only if every um, don't have to name chapters, do we? No. <laughs> Every neighborhood, I think it was Proposition 13. And I'm, I'm including it when I remember it, just because that way you can refer to it if you want to. Every neighborhood of X meets um, capital A. Okay. So if we draw any neighborhood... So if we draw any neighborhood around X, there has to be a point of A inside of there. Okay? There was a closure definition. Or not that. I'm just trying to remember the convergence. There was one. No need to remember anything, uh, any propositions here. Um, we're, we're simply trying to create a sequence that converges to X here. Does anybody... Anybody have an idea how we can do that? Is it, is it possible to do x plus 1 over n plus 1? Okay, so something like this won't make sense to me because I don't know what it means to add two points. I'm not necessarily in the real numbers. Okay. So these could be, even though it is a metric space, this, this concept of addition and subtraction of points isn't necessarily um, viable. Allison? Um, could you take a sequence um, going off of the P for the neighborhoods? If I n of x p, take p and keep making p smaller and intersect the neighborhood with a. That's that's exactly the idea. That's exactly the idea. So for for each, let, let me just try and repeat that for everybody. For each natural number, you can make a neighborhood around x of radius. You said smaller and smaller, right? Mm -hmm. 1 over n, for example, gets smaller and smaller, right? So, in other words, the neighborhood around x of radius, let's just take 1 over n. You don't have to use that specifically, but just something that's getting close to 0. This, this is a neighborhood of x, and we were just told that every neighborhood of x meets a, right? So this neighborhood contains some... Point, I'm going to call it X of N from capital A. So just because the neighborhood meets A, then there has to be that point. So therefore, we've created a sequence in A, right? So we have we have a sequence in capital A, and it converges to X also. X n converges to X. We have to remember the definition of convergence, don't we? Uh, the definition of a convergent sequence in a metric space was that for all P greater than zero, there exists a natural number, capital N, such that as long as um, um, little n is greater than capital N, right, then X sub n is inside the neighborhood of radius p around x. I'm just reciting the, the definition of a convergent sequence. So, um, so we have this, and so is this clear? Should I write down the reason? I should write down the reason. <laughs> I just know better. I should be writing down. I know you guys like to write everything out. Okay, which is a good thing. Okay, since, right, for all p greater than zero, right, uh, we can choose a capital N in the natural numbers such that, and you're going to want to choose capital N to be bigger than, than what, 1 over p. And the reason for that is that then when you, when you reciprocate this um, inequality, Right, 1 over n will be smaller than p, so that 
if little n is greater than capital N, then the distance from xn to x, well, we already know that the distance from xn to x is less than 1 over little n. But 1 over little n, how's that going to compare? 1 over little n is going to be less than 1 over big N, and 1 over big N is going to be less than P. Okay, so that seems to, that seems to work. That makes sense? So this proves that if X is in the closure of A, then, it's in, then it is a limit point of the sequence. Yeah. Okay, that's half of the proof. Now the second half is uh, to go the other way here. Everybody good with that? Okay, mm -hmm. let's go the other way. Let's let x be an element of a prime. We need to show x is in the closure of a. Okay, let's kind of do the do the reverse proof here. Uh, and I'll let you think about that for a second. Okay, so x is a limit point of capital A, and we want to show that x is in the closure of A. Any idea what we're going to do to show that x is in the closure of A? Just the sequence that converges to x. No, so that's the assumption. We know yeah, that there's a sequence, but, but how are you going to get to here? It's just this every neighborhood of X meets A again, right? So guys, make sure you're learning these propositions. Proposition 13 in chapter 3 says that um, an element is in the closure of A if and only if every neighborhood of that element meets A. So to show that X is in the closure of A, I need to let U be a neighborhood of X. And I need to show that it meets A. I take an arbitrary neighborhood of X, and I'm going to show that it meets A. Is that good? Now, a neighborhood, we're in a metric space here. I'm assuming I have a metric space. So a neighborhood is just a traditional, you know, disk, basically, visually thinking of it, where there's a radius and a center point, right? So we can write... We can write um, u as a neighborhood around x of radius p for some p greater than zero. There has to be a, a radius, and there's a so uh, here's your here's your x, and here's your neighborhood u right here, and we have a radius of p. Just a classic chapter two notation for a neighborhood. Good so far? Okay. And our job is to show that there's a point of A in this neighborhood. I know. I don't. Can I name a proposition or you don't? Is there something better? Because I have a proposition that might help. Um, why don't you state your proposition? So if, a sequence, um, if a sequence converges to Y, then any set which contains Y contains all but finitely many of SN. Any open set that contains y? Any open set that contains the limit point right. contains all but finitely many of the points in SM. Okay. That help us uh, it actually kind of does, but you're talking about sequences. I don't yeah. actually have a sequence here yet. But if I can get a sequence. Yeah, so can I get a sequence? Right now I only have an open point. But this is an if and only if statement. Look at your assumption. X is in A prime. I said let A prime denote the limit points of A, right? Mm -hmm. So what that means is that a there is a sequence that converges to x. Exactly. So let's just write that down. No, this is very, very, very relevant. So since x is in a prime, there exists a sequence. I'll call it x sub n in a with x n. 
converging to x. Okay? And of course, <laughs> if xn converges to x, then if we just go back and remember what does that mean, all well, that just means that for all p greater than 0, including the p that's already established in our proof so far, right, for every p, we can find a natural number such that the terms of the sequence get less than p units away from the limit point. Okay? So we already have the p. We don't have to go looking for it. It's already right here. So uh, we can find, um, so I'll just say by definition of convergence, uh, there exists a natural number n such that if little n is bigger than capital N, then um, I'm just going to jump to the conclusion, which is that uh, x sub n is in a neighborhood around x of radius p. In other words, this is x is in u. Okay, so... Um, U intersect A is not empty because X of N is in both places. X of N is in A and X of N is in U, so we're done. Okay? As needed. As needed for Proposition 13. So we're just using that same proposition again. Um, can you see okay from back there? Yeah. If you need more, you can pull up a corner here if you need to. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is actually one of the derived sets. So I, have, I spent all my time this semester talking about closure, interior, frontier, and exterior, those four things. This is actually a fifth derived set that they uh, sometimes talk about, but in the case of a metric space, it's the same thing as the closure, and I didn't really talk about it in a, in a more abstract setting, just decided to leave it at that. So, okay, let's, uh, let's go on and do some other stuff, okay? I got some more problems here. Is everybody good with that? Okay. So, I mean, there's not going to be a lot of emphasis on metric spaces, but I just thought that problem might be a nice one to try. Okay, so let's do a couple more things here. Uh, are these, home, oh, this is number three. Are these homeomorphic? Um, and guys, uh, if I ask this kind of a question, please do not just circle yes or no and move on. You have to explain. <laughs> and so if the answer is no, I want you to give me a topological difference between the two spaces, something that's true about one of them but not the other. Uh, if the answer is yes, I'm willing to... I at least will ask you to give me a homeomorphism. I'll be very clear what I want. I, maybe I won't ask you to prove like that you know, pre-images of open sets are open or whatnot. It might be very tedious to do something like that in just a short time on an exam, but at least I might ask you for a function, okay? So here's the first example. Um, the interval from negative seven to seven and the real numbers. So I want to know if they're homeomorphic. So this is a yes or a no, and also a question of can you give me the function that's going to work. And I haven't stated the topology here. So if I don't state a topology, then which one are you going to assume? Absolute value metric. The absolute value metric, exactly. So the real numbers with the absolute value metric. And this is, of course, also um, a subset of the real numbers, so we're just going to use the subspace topology on this interval and compare it with that, okay? This would be a very good test question right here, okay? Yes or no, are they homeomorphic? If not, give me something that is a difference between the two in a topological sense. If they are, give me a function that um, helps me to see the, the, um, the homeomorphism, okay? So, um, how many people think that